Okay, and uh, we are recording. All right, so first I just want to show what this actually looks like. So this is my own laptop. It has Dropbox installed on it. And so here's just a folder on my computer. So you can see it says Dropbox, and then this is my ELI folder. And that's what it looks like. It's just a you know, normal folder with normal files. They each have this little green check mark, though. And that means that Dropbox has uploaded them to the internet. They're backed up. They're online. This is what the website looks like. Uh, you know, obviously they don't look 100% the same in terms of you know the the actual styling of it. But it's all the same stuff. All the same folders. We have that same ELI conference handout file. So this is accessible online. I also have over here our Mac machine. Now, just a, a few days ago, this was switched to the new style of login, you know, where you log in with your PID ID and password. I logged in for the first time, uh, you know, about an hour ago, uh, setting up for the other presentation. So I had never uh, used this before, but I just went to the Dropbox website, and again, it's all the same files. So going back to the PC, um, I want to show a little bit of how I use Dropbox. So this semester I'm teaching Reading 3. So I just have this file on my hard drive. Um, I have two main things. I have one folder where I keep all of the contents of the Reading 3 jump drive. I just copied it over at the beginning of the semester so that I can access it. Again, so this is the, the website on the right-hand side. From any computer, I can log in and see what's on the jump drive. If I need to find a core vocabulary activity or something, I can do that anywhere when I log into the website. Then I also have my folder of PowerPoints. So every time that I've made a PowerPoint, I've just done it in this folder, just like, you know, I'm trying to step away from Dropbox a little bit. It's just really a normal folder on my computer that happens to be hooked up to Dropbox. So earlier I made a folder for demo, or a file for demonstration. I'll do that again. So let's say I want to make my presentation for Monday. I'll start by just copying and pasting my presentation that actually that I used today because I had a sub. I'll rename it. And let's change the date. I just saved it. I haven't changed anything else. You know, I'm not going to make a lesson in front of you. But now I'm going to jump over to the um, the podium machine here. So I'm just working on my computer. Reading three PowerPoints. Oh. And there it is. So it's already there. So you could work on something upstairs, go downstairs, go on the website, and it's there. It's ready to go. How do you do that? So I just had to have it set up. So this is my own personal computer. I have the actual Dropbox program installed on it. Um, and as long as I have that program installed, I don't have to do anything special. It automatically uploads. However, if you're on a computer that does not have the Dropbox program, and all that you have access to is the website, you can still make a PowerPoint on that computer. You click Upload, and then it's just like an email attachment. I mean, you know, we've all emailed files to ourselves. It's really the same kind of thing. So we just, uh, oh, I thought I made a, an example file. Here, I'm just going to quickly make a little text file. It says, hello. So let's pretend that that's my presentation desktop. Oh, it didn't upload it because there's nothing in the file. Let's. <laughs> yes. All right, now there is something in the file. One more time. Uh, well, let's hit the upload again. Choose file. So I just uploaded it. Oh, and then, well, actually, you can see because I have the program installed, it's saying, hey, something just changed. We just downloaded something. 
that we found on the internet. Uh, but again, if I go over, oh, it's already there, yeah. If I go over to the Mac, even the web page automatically refresh itself. It's already there. So that's what it looks like from my perspective on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I just pretty much work as normal. And because I have the program installed, um, I just never have to think about it. It just all happens behind the scenes. You know, once I set it up, it's set. It just goes. Uh, so let's see. I guess next I'll show you, I think, the other really great feature of Dropbox, which is being able to share files with your students. So I have this folder here on the website with all my PowerPoints. I just have to click on this button right here. It's a link button. And it says share link. And what that does is it makes a special address that goes to this page. And it's, it's really just this address right here, this long complicated link. But if you copy that and you email it to someone, you're now I'm going to open up a new browser window where nothing is logged in. So this could be anyone on the internet is not logged into Dropbox. Actually, I'll show you that. I'm going to go to dropbox.com. See, it's not logged in. But if I paste in that link I just made, the shared link, it shows the PowerPoint folder. Now, from this from this perspective, they can't like change the files or anything like that, but they can view them. And in fact, even if they don't have PowerPoint, if they click on one of these, there's actually a, a built-in PowerPoint viewer that Dropbox has on their website. So you're saying I didn't have to email my students every PowerPoint every no. single day, including today? No, and in fact, I mean, so I set this stuff up at the beginning of the semester. Every time I make a new PowerPoint, I mean, I don't have to do anything. I'm out of the loop. It all happens automatically. Every time they go to that link to the folder, they see exactly what is in this one folder on my computer. Whenever I make something new, whenever I change something. If you, uh, I have a question. Yeah. If you're working on a PowerPoint and you send it on to Dropbox and then you continue to work on it on your computer mm -hmm. and you save it, will the changes be saved only on your computer or onto Dropbox? Onto Dropbox too? also, yeah. Yeah, it always keeps stuff up to date, yeah. So what if you don't necessarily want um, every PowerPoint or every PowerPoint as it is sent to students. Sometimes I put answers to things mm -hmm. in, that I show in the class, but I don't necessarily want them to keep. Sure. Or I, I have extra stuff in there that I want to take out before I send it to them. In that case, yeah, you would have, you could have maybe two folders. You could have, like, PowerPoints, you know, under construction or whatever that's just for you and then have the separate public one and you only add to the public one what you want students to see and it's you know I think I should point out they can see this one folder but nothing else they can't click out of that folder into any of your other files it's just that one folder that's shared because you set it up yeah. yeah yeah and it's just on the website um you just click into the folder that you want to share so although all your files that you showed us from your computer, your your folders and your files all had the checkbox to let as an indication that they're part of Dropbox. The sharing is a whole other step. That's right. The, sh the so actual sharing is a different step. The Dropbox then is serving almost like a pencil backup mm -hmm. for your files plus easy access. Mm -hmm. And then adding the link to a particular folder or file allows others to view it if you send them the link. That's right, yeah. And they only see what specifically you sent to them. So again, I clicked on this PowerPoints folder on the website, went to the share link button, and then that's how I shared just that one folder, just with one special purpose link. Is there any um, like indication of so you know this folder shared and this is not? Uh, actually, it, it does show on the website. If you've ever made a link, mm -hmm. it shows uh, a okay. link. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, as far as I know, there's no way to like destroy that link or make it not work anymore. But a very easy workaround would just be to you know, move the files out of it, delete the folder. You know, but I, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't think that there's a way to 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 undo making a link. Yeah. So you have to be inside the folder, and then you click the link, and then you invite all your students to it. Yeah, you can just send the link as just a normal email, you know. They do have this uh, interface that pops up yeah, I when I click share that? link. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what this looks like in terms of who it says the email's from and stuff. It might be an email from Dropbox itself. I don't know. I usually, I, I try to keep things simple. I just copy the link itself and use my pit email to send it. I figure that's the most kind of simple, official way to do it. But uh, then I wanted to show you what it looks like when you um, make a new class. So again, all of the, the instructions for how to like sign up for Dropbox and stuff, that's all in here. I'm not really going to do that. But so, so I'm sorry, yeah. if you send a link to somebody, they don't necessarily have a Dropbox account. They, have, they do not need a Dropbox account to see the files on the website. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the big selling points for me. Yeah. So you just once you're inside the folder, you just copy that URL. Uh, you have to click on that share link button that oh. opens a new window with a new uh, address. Okay. Then that address is the one you can share with your students. Share link. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then they don't need to have a Dropbox account. They don't need to log in or do anything. They just see all the files. And certain types of files, like PowerPoint files and Word files, can just be viewed through the website. They don't even need to download them. They don't need to have those programs on their computer. Is that the only way to view them, or they can download you, the files too? You can also download. Yeah, let me see. Um, I forget how to. Oh, there it is. There's a, a download button up okay. there. I, I'm pretty sure there's a way to download. Indiv oh, no, 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 that's right. You click on it, and then up at the top, you can download the file. Yeah, direct download. So when they download it, though, they can edit it? Be on, they could do it on their own computer, but it would not upload to Dropbox. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is, you know, it's read only. Mm -hmm. No one can make changes to these files from that, again, this is the shared uh, link. But if they folder. download it, they can then make, it's not read-only when they download it. Well, uh, yeah, once it's on their computer, it's just at like any PowerPoint file. But if they make a change, it's not, nobody else is going to see it. It's just on their computer. It's just any other downloaded file. Like, like, like they could do with an emailed file, for example. Yeah, and that's actually an, another thing. Um, so once you make this link, I mean, anyone could use the link. Your students could send other people the link if they wanted to, but that's the same thing with emailing students' files. You know, they have the files, they can do what they want with them. So it's not really any different. It just may be a little bit more convenient in that sense, that they're all bundled up nicely on the website. I usually set mine as a PDF and students. Okay, you could do that with Dropbox as well. You could, you know, have your folder that's not shared with just the PowerPoints and then you could have a separate folder. Uh, yeah, I, I just call this PowerPoints just because that's what I did a couple semesters ago and I've stuck with it. But you know, yeah, you could just save the PDFs to the public one. Yeah, that's totally possible. So I grabbed a jump drive. So this is Grammar 5. I just wanted to show you what I do when I set up a class. So this is, right now, it's my ELI folder. There's all my past year's stuff, presentations, including this one, professional review, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to make a new folder, Grammar 5. Is that what you want? Is I'd be OK with that. Eh, I don't know. I already have the material. This one was close when I reached for the board. So now I'm going to make a folder called Jump Drive. That's where I will store the files on here. So now I'll plug this in. Copy. 
copy everything, paste everything. So now it's going to my computer. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So now, <laughs> so the, what we saw before were, were little green bubbles. Now these ones are blue. That means that it's synchronizing. It's you know scanning the files. It's uploading the files to Dropbox. Um, this isn't too big. It, it's maybe two minutes, you know, to upload all of this stuff to Dropbox. But already, if we go to the website, uh, okay, that's the shared folder. Let's see. Here we are, back to the website. Go back to my ELI folder. And it already has Grammar 5. It already has that folder jump drive. And things are still uploading, but we see what's been uploaded so far. And this just all happens in real time. And again, I can switch over to the laptop as well. I think it went to sleep maybe? No, okay. ELI. Grammar 5. And same thing. Different computer, but all the same files are accessible. So I never have to bring my laptop to class again. I can just put in every single PowerPoint on Dropbox. And yeah, you could. Uh-huh. Wow. This is life changing. Uh, then what was I going to say? Oh, yes. Then the next part. Well, we already kind of saw this, but if I want to make a folder for my PowerPoints, and then I'll just put that little hello.txt file in it again. Uh, so now let's see what it looks like. I just made a folder for PowerPoints. It has the little hello.txt just as a placeholder. But now if I want to share this with my new class, again, I go to that share link button. I just copy this address. And again, here's the window where nothing is logged in. It's not, you know, it's not logged in as me. It could be anyone on the internet. Go to the address. And there it is. And any new files I add to that Grammar 5 folder I just made for the rest of the semester will always show up here whenever you reload the page. It'll have all the same files. So that's what I've been doing for the last couple of semesters. Um, I found that I usually have to remind my students a couple of times that that exists. I show it to them in class. I show them, you know, oh, here's what it looks like. You click on the link. You see the files. I usually have to repeat that maybe twice over the course of the semester twice is pretty good. Yeah. but um <laughs> Can but you yeah delete it's a file from Dropbox? uh yeah well if yeah. if i would for example here i'll just i'll just cut that and paste it somewhere else so now this is empty if we refresh this page this folder is empty yeah mm -hmm. so you can just pull things right out so you can pull things out but you can't unlink them. Yeah, you can't. To my knowledge, you okay. can't unlink a folder. On the other hand, though, like I said, you could just make... So if you want the same files, but you don't want students to see them anymore, just on your computer, you just make a new folder, move the files over. Um, I mean, that's probably easier than fiddling around on the website, even if they did have that feature. Um, so let's see. Uh, so before I do anything else, are there any other questions or thoughts you have? So if I am working on a document which I've already saved on Dropbox mm -hmm. and I continue to work on my computer and I save, mm -hmm. does that mean it will only be saved on Dropbox and not on my computer? No, it saves on both. It saves on your computer first, just like a normal file in a normal mm -hmm. folder. Then Dropbox notices the change and uploads it. Yeah. So it just Places doesn't add a new thing. No, no, just. Can no, you yeah. limit then what Dropbox will put? Like, so if I add Dropbox to my desktop, like, mm -hmm. and, you know, all the ELI files I have on it, there's no way I need or want them all on Dropbox. No, you save each individual thing in order on Dropbox. Well, uh, yeah, so it makes a folder on your computer. Um, 
your Dropbox folder. I, there are two things I can say about this. So any documents I have elsewhere on my computer, they're not included yeah, in Dropbox. Yeah, so I put them physically, you know, in that folder. Um, I just happen to keep all of my ELS stuff in there because, well, there's, there are a lot of files, but the actual space is not that much. It's mostly, you know, Word documents and PowerPoints. Um, the other thing, though, if you, for example, use Dropbox at home and have, you know, different, like, personal files and stuff, um, and then on another computer you only want ELI, there's a way to do that. Um, when you set it up, there's something called Selective Sync. And you just choose which folder or folders you want. And all the rest of them, they just stay on the internet. They just stay, you know, on your home computer or whatever. You know, so if you have a... So, for example, in M06, um, I set up Dropbox on my, you know, personal, like, pit login. Um, but I only have it set up for the ELI folder. Yeah, all the other stuff, you know, I, I don't need, I don't want on that. Uh, so it can be on different different settings on different computers. Yeah, yeah, different uh, folders on different computers. Um, a little bit more about that, though. So I was able to set that up because I also know the administrator password, so I was able to type that in to install it. Unfortunately, Dropbox only installs per user, not per computer. So, uh, well, I, I make this note in the um, in this here. If you would want to install the actual program itself, and not just use the website on one of our teacher computers, I would have to actually help you do that. I'd have to be there to type in the administrator password to do it. But we can install the program on any computer. Uh, well, in principle, yeah, yeah. If you have administrator access to that computer. Um, but you don't actually need the program to use Dropbox. I can't remember if I've shown this to this group yet, but let's just go through this quickly. You, yeah, you can actually use it entirely through the website as well. Because on the website, uh, let me try to find something. Okay, so right now I'm on the website. Here's a folder, PowerPoints. If I want to add a file to it, there's actually an, an upload file button, just like when you send yourself, when you email yourself a file, it's the same basic principle. Oh yeah, yeah, we did this, that's right. So you choose the file. You just pick it and it uploads. So that takes a couple extra steps compared to if you have it installed on your computer and it happens behind the scenes. But it's entirely possible. And in fact, until it was really just this past week when I was preparing for this workshop that I installed the program. Before that, I was just using the website on the teacher computer. So I have Dropbox installed on my own computer, but I was okay with just using the website on the uh, teacher computer, like when I needed to print stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So what's the advantage of installing Dropbox versus just using the website? If you install it on your computer, then you actually have a folder, you know, sitting on your computer that is exactly the same as what is on Dropbox. If you don't have the program installed, the only things on Dropbox are the things you actually upload through the website. And you don't need an internet connection to work on the files. Oh, yeah, no, you don't need it. That's one of the big advantages of Dropbox over, for example, Google Drive. Um, yeah, all of these are just normal files on your hard drive. You can edit them offline, of course. And then Dropbox, it can't synchronize while you're offline. But as soon as you get an internet connection, it'll upload everything again. So I wanted to show one other. Oh yeah. Um, you mentioned that Dropbox is only used for personal computers. And it only goes live when you go online. Right. And when you go online, yeah. it automatically takes everything that you've done. Mm -hmm. and yeah. In, a, in the Dropbox folder. In the Dropbox folder. So the advantage is you don't have to do the step that we upload. The yeah, on the website, yeah. It would be automatic if you were working within the Dropbox folder. Okay. And you were online. 
So, but if you were doing that, then anything you wanted to upload would have to go into the Dropbox folder. As opposed to if you're working on your folders as you've had them for a bazillion years, <laughs> and you want to put them in Dropbox, then you just have to, then you upload them. Yeah, if you copy those old folders into Dropbox, yeah, they they just be uploaded automatically. If you yeah. copy that, you would have to, you would have to upload it manually. Yeah. Sort of manually. Yeah, because I'm thinking if I have it installed and I have a Dropbox folder and I have all these things I have, then I'm going to have like duplicate folders. You would just keep the the folder in Dropbox. So I just keep all my folders in Dropbox. Right. Yeah, that's that's the way that. They want you to do it. There are other um, synchronization services that actually just let you pick each individual folder all across your hard drive. The way that Dropbox does it, I think, is a lot easier to understand, but it's not as flexible in that sense. So, they want me, so basically, it would mean then, say I put everything in Dropbox, mm -hmm. and if I oh, turn on my computer, and I have only one folder, and it says Dropbox, and then when I open that, then I got Then all your other folders, folders are in there. That's right. And, and everything that's in Dropbox is automatically uploaded? That's right. Uh huh. Okay. But nobody can see it unless I say okay. That's correct. Yeah, so in that sense, it could just be like a backup service. So if your computer explodes, everything is still backed up oh, online. Okay. Like, you get a new computer, you log into Dropbox, everything just comes right back down out of the internet onto the computer. Or it would allow you, without having to do the remote access that never worked for us, exactly. they would allow you to access right. your work whatever you wanted. Right. Yeah. If you had them all there. Yeah. But that yeah. might, you might have to pay for that. Hmm? Well, the, there's a limit for the free service, right? Yeah. There's a limit, to the storage limit. Yeah. Oh, no, that, that was my next question. I have two and a half Well, so by default, it's two gigabytes. If someone else refers you, you get an extra half yeah. a gigabyte. And there's also a promotion right now for academic users yeah. where uh, you have to sign up through a special link, but you get an extra three gigabytes. for So for a total of 5.5 .5 for, um, I think, the next two years. I signed up with the link you sent us, and I only have 2.5. Huh. And mm -hmm. you used your PIT email address? Huh. Yeah, yeah, that, that I mean, shouldn't have happened. I mean, it's not a huge issue for me. I'm only going to use it for class. But yeah, they, so they the call initial, it their... Uh, what's the, the two gigs? And then two. Yeah, if you just sign up off the internet, no special promotions at all. But yeah, this thing is called their, their space race. Right now, it's three gigabytes. Um, if enough people at the University of Pittsburgh oh, yes. sign up, it would jump up to eight gigabytes. I don't know if that's going to happen for the bonus space. Oh, in the Big East, yes, we're number two. Oh, no. But if you look at everyone, it I'm goes, so it's all of your tech universities. Actually, I think, yeah, CMU is oh number God. three in the country. <laughs> for what? Um, for, for how many people space. have yeah, like signed up people? through oh, this promotion. Then MIT, MIT, they're just, I don't know, <laughs> so more than twice as much. <laughs> well, we're 53 overall. That's not bad. <laughs> that that's, that's just about the same as in the Qingdao. Uh, World Survey of Universities. That's right. We're like 58, We're like 58 or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, so, Bill, in A1, if we use this website, does that mean it's coming from a referral from you, or do we have to do yeah. something else? Yeah, and the also the um, the education and discount as well. And the, and or they're not discount, but the, the promotion. Yes. Your referral. Is. Yeah, the actual link without my packaging it into that bit.ly link is really, really long because it includes everything. So I, I, I didn't want to put anyone through that torture of typing out like a 50 character link. Mm -hmm. So I made it simple. But yes, it includes both. And so that's how they know it's a referral from Bill Press. Yes. Okay. So you get additional space then if, if we all go on? Uh, I do also as well. Yes. Oh! Ah, now it's I like, understand. Well, it's... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's like, selling, like selling Amway. <laughs> Except there's no money involved. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's good. No, I think space is like gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that currency. question about the thing when if you if you drag your a folder that's on your um, computer and you drag it to Dropbox, does it move the folder or it copies the folder? Oh, oh well, I mean it'll behave exactly like like a normal folder on your computer. If you move it in, then yeah, it moves. It moves I'm not it, sure it what you copy it. So I won't be. I'm not quite sure what 
So like, I'm does it remain saved on your computer? Like, I mean, well, yeah. are there going to be... Because Dropbox is one place, right? Yes, that's right. So is there going to be... If I have a folder on, like, my C, on my C drive or my documents folder, mm -hmm. and I drag that folder to my Dropbox folder... Oh, I think I see what you're saying. Is that folder going to be copied? Like, I'll have two folders? Well, that's, that's up to you. I mean... Okay. Yeah, so only things inside the Dropbox folder will be synchronized if you make changes. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, what Dropbox wants, they want the Dropbox folder to be like your My Documents folder. They yeah. want everything to be. Why? Why do you want that? Um, that's just the way that they designed it. There's another program. What well, it's just it's just uh, it's a, it's kind of a simple way to do it, and then it's kind of a if you make a new folder, it's automatically included. Yeah, using their no, the alternative. For them to have to put it on their site, so that oh well, they also they sell plans as well. If people need more space, that's how they make their money. They also have like enterprise subscriptions with absolutely enormous amounts of space. Um, so there are lots of paid customers. They just want people to generally adopt it. Um, you, you know, just to, to build they up the familiarity and that kind of thing. They want us to be that sort of thing. On it, so eventually we'll have to, like, buy Oh, no, later. there's not enough space. I better start spending yeah. money on drop better start. Oh, yeah, that's that's their business okay. model. Okay. Well, I knew there had to be a marketing ploy. I just didn't get what it was. Like, it's, 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 it's a drug. <laughs> <laughs> Here, try it. Try it. It's free. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> and every day we're going to be like, give me drop box. Give me more cakes. Oh, oh my gosh. Give me more cakes. <laughs> <space. laughs> But um, I wanted to show like one other I'm really neat thing that's uh, <laughs> this is kind of more advanced, but I think it's really neat. So I also have Dropbox on my phone, so I can just okay. So here's something. Let's look at my phone first. Yeah. So here's uh, this some kind of instruction thing for the remote. If I just take a picture of this, yeah, I just took a picture. Now, I'm not touching anything else. I set this up. So one of the things that they do to make people want to buy more space is they have this camera upload feature where it'll automatically upload things from a smartphone or an iPad or something to Dropbox. And it's already there. I was stalling, but it's already online. So it, it automatically went to my Dropbox to this camera uploads folder. Seriously? Oh, it came up sideways, but... Um, <laughs> Oh, so it's great. almost like a fake document projector yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, it's an app. <laughs> so I just took the picture. It went from my phone to the internet to Dropbox, and then it came down to the computer. Oh my god! Oh my brain's going. Oh, so. I have, like, mine too. I have to go get a smartphone now. So. <laughs> Santa. Santa. Yeah. So I. I Oh yeah. So uh, so I showed like the more advanced thing where you're actually projecting it. But yeah, no. I mean, for a couple of years, there have been times when, for example, maybe I wanted to collect homework, but some students had written it in their books. Mm -hmm. So I say, okay, give it to me, and I take a picture, and then. And then it's on my computer. I can open it. It's not very easy to grade. I mean, it's not as easy as like just writing you something, but yeah. yeah, I could print it out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want students to get in the habit of making things like that Yeah, but it's, you know, it's just a, a creative way to use the technology. Wow. Wow. See, I already thought, I was shocked when on the first day students, instead of writing down the homework. Oh, they say that they're taking Oh, I oh yeah. them now. I say no, write it down, because their, their spelling's not going to improve if they're not writing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really. Good thought. Plus, they will remember better if you write it down. Well, they need to practice. Like, I think everybody yeah. on the have like little homework books that should be like one of the yeah. required books. <laughs> but they're sitting there like, click, click. Well, that's great. All this is great. Thank you so Thank much. You. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Now, let's, okay, now let's throw a spanner in the works. So let's say we get um, CourseWeb up and running. Mm -hmm. That's what Greg asked. He was going to ask how it compared with CourseWeb. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, with... with and we want, and we would want like teachers to be using it because it's a pit product mm -hmm. that is supported by pit, for example. 
Yeah, so they have some overlapping uses, but they're fundamentally different. So with course web, that's really like, you know, it's where you keep your grades. And so where they overlap would be like sharing PowerPoints, right? So right. that's super, super easy with Dropbox. Not quite as easy with course web, but that's kind they of an official thing. You can post the link um, course web so they can access uh, it. That's a good idea. That's true. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, so it's still through that hub of coursework. That's a really good idea, actually, yeah. Um, but so with Dropbox, fundamentally what you're doing is you're backing up files. That's not something that CourseWeb does. Um, so you never, ever, ever have to use any of the sharing features of Dropbox um, in principle. Uh, sorry? Well, either way, either way, you could pick and choose. You know, if you want to share files with students, you could use CourseWeb, you could use Dropbox. But with Dropbox, you also get the, the backing up files. You can open them on any computer. That's not something that CourseWeb is designed for. Well, and this would be great for if I write a vocabulary activity, instead of emailing it to the other reading for teachers every day, I could just put it on, make a file for the teachers. For yeah, reading. that's and that's another thing. I've been showing you like the public shared folders where you can only access, you can't change it. They also have shared folders. If other people have Dropbox accounts, you can make a shared folder in your Dropbox that everyone can see. Um, let me show you that really quickly. So I did PSLC Summer School, and I worked with someone, you know, University of Georgia. We made a shared folder. You can't really see that well, but there's the icon is two little people on the folder. And so this looks exactly the same on my computer as it looks on her computer. And if one of us changes a file, the other one sees the changed file. It all happens automatically. So that could be, uh, that's something I thought about. It could be great for, you know, any specific curriculum, yeah, instead of... I like Seriously. Well, is actually working to provide us with the same function. Exactly. But when... I don't know when it is. It's nice. And, well, there is one great drawback to this. And that is if someone deletes files from this or messes something up, the same thing happens oh, to other people too. Uh, yeah. So if you if someone <laughs> drags this to their desktop and moved it out of Dropbox, Dropbox will say, Oh, okay, we're deleting that folder now. And so yes, yeah, so, um, so people have to know how to use it and that's yeah. I, so this is kind of fresh in my mind because um, I set up Dropbox years ago for my parents' office. They, you know, little tiny law office, just pretty much the two of them. And um, and then one day when my mom was working on a certain computer, she dragged all the files out of it, and they all disappeared. <laughs> and we had to put them all back in. So that that was unfortunate. Um, yeah. Lesson learned. Yes. Uh huh. It's the you know. That expert blind spot. You have to to you know to see what the student does to sometimes see where the problem spots will be. Yeah. So can we have? I guess we would just have like a different like folder inside Dropbox if we had one to share with teachers, and then we would have a different one for students. So the students being read only mm -hmm. and the teachers being read write. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, different kinds of sharing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for yes. this. Uh -huh.